I all, all hope you're having a good day at whatever time zone you're in and whatever country you're in. Uh, my name is Susan Quindag, and I am happy to share uh, my article with you that I have published in Enlivening Faith, Music, Spirituality, and Christian Theology. And I hope that uh, through my presentation and the other presentations on the panel as well, you would consider purchasing this book uh, and it might uh, spark some ideas for your research and, and any, any other musical activities. My article is titled, It Is Well With My Soul, How Spiritual Music Is Relationship Despite Racism. Spiritual music is relationship. That is the answer and the conclusion I gave in a previous article titled, Seeking Oneness, Exploring a Relational Ontology of Spiritual Music. In there, I pursue the question, what makes music spiritual? And I argue that every um, uh, spiritual thought, religion, or premise is based on being reconciled or having a relationship with a higher power, higher being, energy, or even within self. As an evangelical Christian who believes the Bible to be true and inerrant, I believe I am a sinner and separated from God the Father but I'm reconciled through God, his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for my sins. Therefore, the music, um, music, in order for it to be spiritual, must bring me into a thought and mindfulness of this relationship with God. I chose the term oneness from Christ's prayer to God found in John 17, 21 that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And with that, I wrote three confluent streams of spiritual music. Music has relational value. It has the potential to communicate. Music is relationship. It brings individuals into community. Spiritual music is relationship. It brings individuals into oneness with deity or belief. The current article that I am discussing today that was published in Enlivening Faith, I pursue the question, how is spiritual music relationship? For a while, I had that question on my mind. And then on June 18th, 2015, I turned on my television on, when I was on vacation in Arizona and saw a news flash coming out from Charleston, South Carolina, South Carolina being my home state now. It was reported that Dylan Roof, a 21 year old white male entered the Emanuel African Methodist Episcopalian Church in Charleston, South Carolina. The church members welcomed him into the church for the Bible study. And after a while, he shot and killed nine members, including the pastor, Clementa Pickney. I have been by that church many times on my trips to Charleston. And I also attended the sister AME church in Greenville when I was studying Gullah music. So like all South Carolinians, I was glued to my television and my iPad. Roof made no attempts to soften or excuse his hate crime. He clearly stated he wanted to brutally murder black people in the church. It was a premeditated hate crime. In the USA, I am considered a woman of color, a minority living in the Southern region. For decades, the South has had a reputation for racism. When I first moved to South Carolina in 1981, I didn't necessarily feel the racism as much as I felt that I was a person of curiosity. People were not used to seeing a Filipino uh, a person walking down the street and they were not malicious, but they asked me a lot of questions like, what country did I come from? 
and what language did I first speak? They always were surprised for some reason when I said that I came from the same country they did, the United States. However, through the decades, I saw growth, good growth in the South as it became more multicultured. Each day I saw cultures and races and different nationalities and individuals getting along and helping each other. But after Ruth committed that racially motivated hate crime, many of us wondered if there would be acts of violence that would reverse the racial relationships that were built in South Carolina. Instead, we saw members of the AME Church forgive Ruth. When they had a chance to confront him in prison, they said they were not going to hold any bitterness toward him. One member even said, repent, confess, give your life to the one who matters the most, Christ, so that he can change you. The community made it a spiritual matter, prayed, and they had, they had prayer vigilance, they had memorial services, and they carried each other's burdens. News commentators, reporters, pundits, and a lot of people in the, throughout the country were amazed at this response. I continued to watch the memorial services and of course attended especially to the music such as Amazing Grace and It Is Well With My Soul. Months later, I realized that that event was helping me formulate my con concept of spiritual music and relationship. So today, I offer you the six considerations of how spiritual music is relationship. One, all relationships contribute to spiritual music becoming relational. As a Christian, I believe God is a relational God. This is evident in seeing the Trinity that God has a relationship even within him, himself in the three persons in one. God created us for a relationship. When sin came, we were separated from him and we lost that relationship. But that relationship is gained again through accepting Jesus Christ as Savior. And then eternity is all about having a relationship with God. Since God made us in his image, we too are relational, and we do see things relationally. That would include music. So we can consider relationship in the music. Um, we could look at the events of the music, the arrangements, the text. We want to see music in relationship to the history, performance, and style. But we could even look at relationships that are non-musical ideas, such as culture and current events. Number two, the strength of relationality of a center of belief correlates to the strength of spiritual music becoming relationship. We are not either or people when it comes to relationship. Relationships, uh, relationality can be placed on a continuum. On one side, you could have strong people who are, have strong relationality. On the other side, you can have people who are have weak relationality or even no relationality or maybe even anti-relationality. And depending on who your belief system is and how that belief is relation, relational will determine where you're going to fall on that continuum. Think about the members at the Emanuel AME Church, how strong relationally they were when they even reached out and encouraged uh, Ruth and, and tried to explain what he needed to do with his relationship. That is very unusual. And that demonstrated what high relationality they had, as opposed to Ruth, who was willing to murder uh, innocent people at a church. Number three. Truth within a belief system is essential for spiritual music to be relationship. 
this is probably the most complex and extensive of all these considerations. And I'm just going to offer one small example. I want to say that as we, as we get closer in relationship, we need to know, be able to trust that person or that relationship. But let me give you this example. What if I were not a Christian and I was considering the viability of accepting Christianity as a spiritual premise? What are the things I would I want to know? I would want to know if these ideas are true. I would want to know if what the people are saying is true. I would want to know if these people uh, who believe this is tr true, if they act on that belief as truth. This is why it is the truth within a belief system is essential when looking at spiritual music. Four, the authenticity of, of creators and participants of spiritual music is valuable when bringing others into relationship. Authenticity has been studied with philosophers and psychologists. I guess you could reduce it to the sincerity of who we really are and what we really value. I believe you actually observe authenticity, but I also believe that it can be sensed, especially by intuitive people. And so the more authentic you are, as far as your music, whether you're creating it or performing it, the more valuable it will be when bringing others to that relationship. Five. Relational understanding is needed when the cultural or aesthetic expectancy of spiritual music is questioned or not experienced. When I heard the music at the memorial service of the victims of the Emmanuel AME Church, I knew that it came from um, a gospel, black gospel, spiritual tradition. But I know many of my friends and colleagues when I was back at Bob Jones University who would actually uh, not accept that as spiritual music or even maybe look at it with a little bit of uh, disdain. They would have cognitive interference. I think it's important that even though you may or may not like that style of music, that to keep the relationship, you need to understand these perspectives in the relationship, especially when you disagree. And there are many times, many things that could be brought up of why that music was performed the way it was, going back to the gullahs. So relational understanding is just something that is essential. And the sixth consideration, although it is unknown whether music can cause spirituality, it can kindle spirituality. When I used to teach psychology of music to graduate students, we would often have this discussion, does music cause spirituality? And we would debate biblical passages such as Psalm 105, 2, Colossians 3, 16, Acts 16, 25, and Samuel 16, 23. I can't say that definitively that music can cause spirituality, but I know it can kindle it, much like um, kindling wood can, and branches can create fire. And here's a bonus. If powerful, there can be changes. Now, how could you use these six considerations? You can use them in psychology of music when you're teaching a, a course like that. You could consider it in performance practices, and you could consider them in even non-musical issues. I don't have time to expound on this, but my next journey in research will be looking at racism. And after, especially after reviewing this article, I'd like to write something on a ration, uh, relational response to racism. In conclusion, um, the members of the AME Church have carried on. They still have services and they still, still in some ways are grieving, but they're able to sing 
songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, and they're able to use and hang on to that uh, uh, at that Bible verse from Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3.16. Thank you for taking the time. If you're interested, please consider purchasing the book. And let's talk further if you'd like. If you'd like to communicate, there's my email address at Liberty. And I wanted to just quickly say that I dedicate this presentation to my close friends who encourage and inspire me, even when I, you thought I wasn't listening. Thank you. Have a great day today.